Welcome to Cox OC Connection. I'm Lacey Kelly and this is Civic Connection where we visit with your civic leaders. Today I'm excited to be visiting with Jay Barbuto who is the director of the Center for Leadership of the Mahalo College of Business and Economics and is an associate professor of organizational behavior at Cal State University Fullerton. Welcome Jay. Hi Lacey, it's great to be here. Welcome to South County and to Civic Connection. I first uh, would like to ask you just to tell us a little bit about Cal State Fullerton Center for Leadership and how it's really focused on grooming our future professionals. Well, as you probably know, the, the motto at Cal State Fullerton's Mahalo College of Business and Economics is ready to work, ready to lead. And so the Center for Leadership is there to uh, promote that development of leadership. And so we have leadership development initiatives uh, for all levels of the university. So we have programs for undergraduate students, we have programs for graduate students, programs for our alumni, and then we also have programs that reach out into the business and organizational community of Orange County. Excellent. How are you approaching the practical application for your students within the business world? Well, the, um, one of the things we try to do uh, to make sure that everything we do has a practical uh, basis and has a real practical application is that all of our initiatives uh, are developed and managed and sort of st strategized with our advisory board. We have an advisory board of 22 uh, high-level executives uh, from a variety of corporate headquartered organizations, some community organizations. Um, <laughs> you're on our advisory board and uh, as well. We have a, a great advisory board that really helps us to make sure that the things we're doing are going to be relevant and going to be well grounded and, and in demand. Sure, and, and one of the things I do know about that group is that it's unique in that you're getting real world information from leaders who can tell you what's needed in the business community. So uh, kudos to you for putting that together. I know that you were hired to do that, correct? To put this together, so. Exactly, I came to the center in August 2011 and the charge was to develop these initiatives and to create industry connections. Excellent. Um, a lot of our elected leaders are challenged by the reality that these young people that you're training are leaving not just Orange County, but even the state. A couple reasons for that. Um, we know that housing costs is one, um, job opportunity is another. What do you see is key to keeping these young professionals within our county and helping us um, help our economy, the future of our economy thrive? Yeah. You know, a recent study uh, by Price Waterhouse Coopers uh, studied over, I exact number but studied over 40,000 employees and one of the things they found about this this younger generation the Millennials is that they are not interested in the exact same thing that the boomers and even generation Xers were interested in so businesses and communities that want to uh, keep the the younger workers happy and the younger workers engaged and the younger workers committed to the organization Need to, need to do some things a little differently. It's not just about money, because the first instinct we say is how do we keep people from leaving the state because of rise, rising costs? We immediately think, well, we need to throw money at the problem. We need to raise salaries. But really what this new generation is really seeking is a sense of purpose in their work, and, and having a stronger sense of purpose will be a, a great draw for this younger generation. Also, if we can give this younger generation a clearer sense of how they can grow and how they can develop and how they can progress in an organization. That will also be a, a real uh, valuable thing to keep people excited, keep people engaged in an organization. The third thing that we can do is to create an environment at work that is not just all business, but that also gives folks an opportunity to develop a social identity because the young generation wants to feel connected at work. They want to feel connected to their coworkers. Um, and so there has to be some kind of a social draw in, in, in organizations to really attract this younger generation. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like the Center for Leadership is really poised to be in that position to bridge that gap between us baby boomers and these younger folks. Am I correct? Well, you know, the dialogues we continue to have uh, with our advisory board members at our conferences, at our uh, events, uh, we try to bring about these, these important issues and uh, when we need to research them, we research them. And we, when we need the information, we reach out to businesses and ask those, those, those questions. And so yeah, we try to create a symbiotic relationship with industry, with community leaders, and with the resources that we have at, at the university. Too. Excellent, I'm sure that's gonna have a profound impact on Orange County. 
What about policymakers? What can they do to um, advance these same principles and help create this environment that you're talking about? Well, that's a great question. What can policymakers do to, um, to create this type of environment? Um, and I'm not sure that I have, uh, I, I'm not sure that I have a recipe for policymakers. Um, but uh, considering that this, this younger generation is looking for a sense of community, uh, this younger generation is looking for a sense of identity. Uh, any kind of community programs, any kind of uh, pro, uh, initiatives that are going to enhance community ties, that are going to enhance organizations' abilities to create a community environment, those are going to be the types of initiatives that will be more attractive to the younger generation. So Got that it. might guide some mm -hmm. policymakers without being real specific. Right, right, excellent. Okay, well you've had great success in your training programs and you've got some really strong partners, examples, Disneyland Resort and Allergan. Also, you're partnering with cities. What are some of the key components to that in your success? Well, one of the things we're trying to do is reach out to the entire community, the businesses and, and communities to uh, make sure that we're uh, making the, the most positive impact both, both for our students and for the communities. Uh, working with local uh, uh, businesses, for example, uh, lately we've been, I've been d uh, developing some relationships with chambers of commerce mm -hmm. uh, within cities, and we want to also develop more relationships with uh, elected officials mm -hmm. in, those, in those environments. These kinds of relationships will continue to make sure that we're making the kinds of impact that are more on target mm -hmm. and any all of our initiatives that we're making we want to make sure that we're reaching out to the right organizations and to the businesses and so the relationships that we're developing with cities and with um, uh, elected officials really helps to uh, target those those efforts absolutely absolutely okay well you have a very unique initiative that I'm a big fan of the leadership scholars program What's the goal of the program, and, and tell us how that's going. Yeah, we're really excited about the Leadership Scholars Program. It was originally developed to bridge uh, business industry uh, with our undergraduate students. More specifically, we want to bring executives and the business leaders in Orange County to Cal State Fullerton so that our undergraduate students can learn from them, can glean wisdom from them, and can also develop uh, some of their networking skills uh, to once a month break bread with, with senior executives at some of the top uh, organizations and communities uh, around Orange County. It's such a great opportunity for our undergraduate students. Uh, we've had events now for the past two years, and we've had uh, six events during the last uh, academic year, seven events during the last academic year. This year we're, we're poised for another seven events, and we've had between 35 and 95 undergraduate students that have shown up on a Friday wow. afternoon a non-class day, <laughs> wearing suits and excited to meet these executives. Our executives have found the, our students to be uh, a breath of fresh air and our students have loved meeting the speakers and, and learning from them. What a phenomenal opportunity you're providing. When I was a young professional, those kind of opportunities didn't exist and I imagine that they're um, being recognized as very, very valuable. Um, you have another unique program called Bringing Learning to Work and I know you've uh, crafted some specific uh, programs uh, that work with city professionals, but the program is also available to businesses as well. Can you tell us about the Bringing Learning to Work program? Yeah, the Bringing Learning to Work initiative was developed uh, to bring the faculty expertise of Cal State Fullerton out to the business community to make uh, that the, the resources that we have available to businesses and communities. Uh, at Cal State Fullerton, we have some outstanding faculty, especially in the organizational behavior and leadership area, uh, or just general management area. And uh, our faculty are great presenters, they're great speakers, but they're also doing some cutting edge research and they are, they are real thought leaders in their industry. And so to be able to provide for businesses and the community these, these experts that are also terrific presenters and terrific in the boardroom, terrific in the classroom, ter terrific in, the, um, in, a, in, a, in an auditorium even. Uh, and so what we do with the Bringing Learning to Work program is we, we provide at a fairly low, low cost opportunities to bring the learning to your organization. So a company or a community or an organization 
can essentially fill up their conference room and we'll fill the room with, with uh, learning. We'll mm -hmm. fill the room with a variety of topics. We have 58 topics that uh, folks can choose from, organizations can choose from, uh, from a variety of areas in leadership and communication, uh, work and life skills, um, uh, supervisory skills, a variety of, of areas. Um, and so during, during this, uh, well, I, I guess one of the things that I think helps to separate the Bringing Learning to Work program maybe from consulting programs that you might find from other companies is that we're not-for-profit organization. Okay. At the Center for Leadership, our goals are to bring the learning out to the community and to make a difference in the, in the business community. So in addition to perhaps being a, a better price point than what our competitors might offer, we're offering a level of expertise that our competitors cannot bring or are not likely to bring. We're bringing a very good quality of presentation, quality of program with expertise. Um, the other thing that we're offering that fo other folks could never offer is that the proceeds from our program, the proceeds from the Bringing Learning to Work program actually come back to the Center for Leadership and, and actually fund the student programs like the Leadership Scholars Program oh, that's fantastic. and those sorts of things. So while our competitors or other consulting companies are sort of turning profit, what we're doing is we're funding student programs. Reinvesting. Yeah. That's exciting. That's, that's really good for our audience to know. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, well, I also know that you give out a couple of business awards uh, every year, an individual one and a company one. Can you tell mm -hmm. us about those awards and maybe some of the past winners? Yeah, I'd love to tell you more about that. We actually, this will be our third year hosting um, an awards event. Uh, the last two years, uh, we've, we've recognized, uh, in 2012, we recognized one individual, Paul Felino from Emulex, mm -hmm. with uh, an excellence in leadership an Excellence in Executive Leadership Award. Last year, we recognized Lucy Dunn uh, from the Orange, maybe sure Orange County Business Council. Orange County <laughs> Business Council, mm -hmm. uh, the president and CEO of that group. She was recognized as uh, demonstrating excellence in executive leadership for 2013. And last year, for the first time, we offered an award to an organization, which was an award for excellence in leadership development, given every year to an organization that exemplifies uh, leadership development and has, a, has demonstrated a, a great uh, commitment to developing its own leaders as demonstrated through its uh, leadership development programs and through its policies and, and whatnot. We, this year we're looking forward to recognizing another individual executive and we're also looking forward to recognizing another organization for the leadership development award and okay. that uh, awards luncheon will be this may may 9th mm -hmm. um, and i believe we're i always mix up we're having it at the radisson in newport beach okay. on, on may 9th this okay year. and quickly if someone wanted to find out how to get uh, tickets to that where would they go uh, they would visit our website at and the website address is leadership I don't know they the website. They can contact Jay Barbuto <laughs> yeah, at the Leadership con Center. <laughs> exactly. They can contact Jay Barbuto at the Leadership Center. A business.fullerton.edu, they're telling me. They've got it up on the screen yeah, for us. That's so. great. <laughs> well, Jay, I want to thank you for spending time with us today. You clearly have a, a load of enthusiasm yeah. um, that is required for such an entrepreneurial program. So thank you for sharing it with us today and, and continued good luck to you on all your endeavors. Well, thank you for joining us today. That's it for Cox Civic Connection. I'm Lacey Kelly. See you next time.